Hello and welcome to VTC Now World. Donald Trump's lawyers urged a federal judge on August the 7th to reject a protective order sought by prosecutors ahead of the former U.S. president's 2020 election trial, saying it would violate his free speech rights under the Constitution. Prosecutors, in asking for the protective order, argued that Trump could otherwise improperly disclose confidential evidence before trial. In a filing late on August 7th, U.S. District Judge Tanikan Chukan ordered the two sides to meet on August 8th and agree on two possible dates for a hearing to be held no later than August 11th on the matter. Trump's attorneys did acknowledge that some court documents should be shielded from the public, such as materials from the grand jury investigation that led to last week's indictment accusing Trump of orchestrating a plot to overturn his 2020 election loss. Every time the However, left Trump's attorneys wrote in the court papers that the need to protect that information does not require a blanket gag order you, over all documents produced by the government. Reply brief, prosecutors said that since the they had asked for the protective the order, Trump's attorneys had discussed the, the case they on major U.S. television networks. Prosecutors said Trump had a plan to litigate this you case in the media. In the White House, their reign will be over and America will be a free nation once again. We're not a free nation. A U.S. judge on August the 7th dismissed Donald Trump's defamation counterclaim against the writer E. Jean Carroll, handing a fresh legal defeat to the former president at his sixth another White House term. U.S. District Judge Lewis Kaplan in Manhattan said Carroll's statements made on CNN the day after she won a $5 million jury verdict against Trump for defamation and sexual abuse were at least substantially true, and Trump failed to show she made them with actual malice. Alina Haber, a lawyer for Trump, said they strongly disagree with the flawed decision and will be filing an appeal shortly. Trump, 77, filed his counterclaim in a second defamation lawsuit by Carroll, 79, who is seeking at least $10 million. A trial is scheduled for January 15, 2024. Trump sued Carroll after the former L magazine columnist said, Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. When asked on CNN about the jury's finding that he had not raped her, he also objected to Carol recounting how she had told his lawyer he did it and you know it soon after the verdict was read. Earlier, former President Donald Trump on August the 3rd called it a sad day for America and he spoke briefly to reporters shortly after entering a not guilty plea in federal court on charges. He tried to overturn his loss in the 2020 presidential election. It was a very sad day for America, and it was also very sad driving through Washington, D.C., and seeing the filth and the decay and all of the broken buildings and walls and the graffiti. This is not the place that I left. It's a very sad thing to see it. Uh, when you look at what's happening, this is a persecution of a political opponent. This was never supposed to happen in America. This is the persecution of the person that's leading by very, very substantial numbers in the Republican primary and leading Biden by a lot. So if you can't beat him, you persecute him or you prosecute him. We can't let this happen in America. Thank you very you much. Want everyone. These, you want these Trump on July 18th said he had received a letter from Smith telling him that he was the target of the January 6th grand jury investigation in Washington. He has sought to portray the prosecutions as part of a politically motivated witch hunt. The charges stem from Special Counsel Jack Smith's sprawling investigation into allegations Trump sought to reverse his loss to Biden. In spite of his growing suite of criminal indictments, former President Donald Trump has managed to dominate the 2024 Republican Party presidential primary field.
Trump's re-election bid reported massive surges in donations. In the wake of both his first indictment in late March in New York and the federal indictment returned in June, pointing out the campaign has deliberately used his criminal exposure as a fundraising tactic by putting the various churches front and center in his many appeals for cash. Justice Department Special Counsel Jeff Smith announced a third indictment against Trump for his efforts to subvert the 2020 presidential election results. Trump's campaign team used the indictment as a fundraising opportunity, offering I Stand with Trump t-shirts for $47 donations to their Tom Save America Joint Action Committee. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie accused Trump of using donations instead of his properties to pay legal bills, spending over 20 million U.S. dollars in the first six months of the year alone. Christie also criticized other candidates, including former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley, for their reluctance to challenge Trump for the nomination. However, attacks haven't seemingly paid off to affect Trump's lead.